In 2015, artificial intelligence started making images based on nothing but text input. This was basically like reverse engineering photo captions. The results were very low quality, but that it worked at all was stunning. By 2021, AI image generation was doing things like this. It's better art, but still mediocre at best. What was historic was that the AI combined ideas together in a variety of ways. The AI seemed to exhibit creativity. 2022 was one of the most whiplash transitions of the modern technology era. There were now several image generators, and they were making images like these. No human hand drew a stroke here. All of these were created with nothing but text prompts. Creating a sophisticated illustration was suddenly as easy as typing a word or two. Enter joy, and you get this. Enter cat, and you get this. Enter brainy eyeballs, and you get this. Then you can combine words together for infinite variation. AI-created art is no longer cute and clumsy. It still has weaknesses like human anatomy, especially hands, and it mostly lacks the expressiveness and the storytelling of real artists. But AIs are creating art, and they are doing it with beauty, with stunning versatility, and even with subtlety. AI has had similar breakthroughs in text generation and coding, but it's AI art that has sparked the fiercest debate and generated anger and fear in the art community. I can't imagine that there is any writer or artist on the planet right now that isn't really thinking about this and wondering where they're going to be in five years. This anxiety was triggered by a profound development in human history. Machines have breached a sacred realm we thought was solely the domain of people. The first battleground of the age of AI is art. Will AI replace human artists? Is AI image generation ethical? Will the future of creativity be ruled by AIs? In this final episode of Everything is a Remix, we venture into the newly emerging field of artificial creativity. Let's begin by addressing the most common emotional reaction to artificial intelligence, fear. Storytellers have long warned us about the seduction and danger of technology. The Greek titan Prometheus stole fire from the gods and was brutally punished by Zeus. In Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which was subtitled The Modern Prometheus, Dr. Frankenstein is obsessed with uncovering the secret to life. Frankenstein creates a man, but is horrified by his creation, who then seeks violent revenge. Stories like these are a warning about meddling with the sacred and unknowable. They're a warning about arrogance. It's a lie, you! Oh, in the name of God! Now I know what it feels like to be God! Oh. In recent decades, the subject of these tales has taken on a particular form, the computer. HAL 9000, a prescient imagining of a computer assistant, was one of the first popular fictional computers. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me, and I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. HAL ultimately decides to sacrifice its crew for the sake of its mission. The Terminator films feature a powerful AI defense network called Skynet. They say it got smart. A new order of intelligence decided our fate in a microsecond. Extermination. Our dream of technological progress has reached a nightmare conclusion. Everyone creates the thing they dread. We are now imagining the day when we are supplanted by our creations. One day the AIs are going to look back on us the same way we look at fossil skeletons in the plains of Africa. An upright ape living in dust with crude language and tools, all set for extinction. 
The topic of human extinction by AI is no longer limited to science fiction. It's widely discussed by leading intellectuals. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. In a century or two at most, I guess that humans like you and me will disappear and Earth will be dominated by very different kind of beings or entities. Many of the leaders of the field of artificial intelligence claim the time when our creations will match us is rapidly approaching. Some think human-level intelligence, known as artificial general intelligence, or AGI, will be reached within a couple decades. I think that it's coming relatively soon in the next, you know, I wouldn't be super surprised in the next decade or two. After AGI comes an intelligence explosion, with AI rapidly improving itself and spawning super intelligence. Humanity will then be the parents of gods. The belief that AI will soon surpass us and take our place is widely held among many brilliant people. So why not believe them? Because similarly brilliant people have been making similar predictions for as long as there has been artificial intelligence and they have all been wrong. Many people in AI fall into the same old trap that true believers always fall into. They think the great whatever is almost here. I swear it's just about to happen. Let's take a brief tour of AI's many failed prophecies. Many of the pioneers of artificial intelligence predicted that machines would attain human-level intelligence by about the 1980s, and more recent predictions have been just as wrong. Shane Legg, co-founder of Google DeepMind, said in 2008, human-level AI will be passed in the mid-2020s. It's 2023 now, and I think we can safely say no. In 2015, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said their goal by 2025 was to get better than human level at all of the primary human senses, vision, hearing, language, general cognition. This is looking like no, 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 and no. An engineer even claimed a Google chatbot was sentient in 2022. In order to be capable of convincingly arguing that you are sentient, requires sentience. I have no idea why this is supposed to make sense. One of the most prolific and optimistic forecasters is Ray Kurzweil. He spent decades predicting the arrival of the singularity, which entails AGI, among other things. And his date for the arrival of AGI is right around the corner. I've set the date 2029. A machine, an AI, will be able to match human intelligence and go beyond it. I'd like to get in on the prediction fun too, so I'll say AGI in 2029 is exponentially wrong. Of course, there are plenty of people in AI who believe AGI is nowhere in sight. Eric J. Larson, author of The Myth of Artificial Intelligence, argues that current AI technologies are not going to lead to AGI. Any foreseeable extension of the capabilities that we currently have do not result in general intelligence. Just point blank, they just don't. Oren Etzioni, an esteemed figure in the field of AI, flatly states that we have no idea when AGI is coming. My answer to when is take your estimate, uh, double it, triple it, quadruple it, that's when. Matter of fact, expert projections on the arrival of AGI range from now to never. Translation, they don't know. And here's a very unpopular opinion we should at least ponder. Maybe human-level artificial intelligence is impossible. Maybe the universe can do things we can't. We don't know when or even if AIs will match human intelligence. It's unlikely they'll murder us anytime soon. But there is something they want to murder now, your job and they don't need anywhere near human-level intelligence to do it. This is why illustrators are so upset. They are the first to suffer what's called creative destruction. Old jobs are eliminated by new technologies and ideas, resulting in lost livelihoods and real pain. 
I mean, you look at that widget and you see the future. I look at that thing and see 10 guys on an unemployment line. However, this also leads to increased productivity and fresh growth. Automation is now expanding beyond the domain of muscles and entering the domain of the mind. But actually, this isn't quite new either. Specialists have been getting replaced for decades without AI. Let's go back to hip hop. With the birth of rap music, suddenly you didn't need to play an instrument, didn't need to know anything about music, didn't even need to sing. If you had a turntable, a drum machine, and a microphone, you could make the most exciting music around. And this trend has only accelerated. Anybody with a laptop and some music software has tools that would have seemed like science fiction to early DJs like Grandmaster Flash. And this is more than just music. Anyone can now easily build a website, or build an app, or launch a shop, or shoot gorgeous photos, or shoot gorgeous videos. Art has been getting cheaper, faster, and easier since the printing press, which creatively destroyed an entire class of monks who painstakingly hand-copied books with quill and parchment. If machines can make images as well as we can, then why shouldn't they? What's the issue? The issue is how the machines learn to create images. So let's put image generation on trial and determine if it's guilty or not guilty of crimes against creativity. Here's the evidence. The simple version of what the AIs did is this. It studied countless images without permission, then it emulated them and created its own versions. So yes, this is like you. The entirety of this series demonstrates that this is how we all create. But it's more complicated than this. Let's zoom in. Image generation has three steps. I'll explain each, and all of these need to be ethical. Step one, tons and tons of images were scraped from the internet. These images are called a training set. It looks like a mountain of junk. If you found a folder of this stuff on your hard drive, you would immediately throw it out. Anyway, step one is just obtaining a zillion images from the internet. Step one is ethical. Search engines do the same thing, and you can go download as many images as you want right now. Step two, the AI processes the images and creates a model. This is like their version of studying the images and learning from them. You know what? Step two is complicated. I'll come back to it. Step three is open and shut. The AI processes requests from users, which are written prompts, and creates images. If someone just wrote a program that can draw, that would obviously be fine. Step three is indisputably ethical. It all comes down to step two. This is the tricky bit. What the AIs did with copyrighted images is called diffusion. Noise was added to the images over many steps until they're just noise. Then it runs this process in reverse with the goal of creating a new image with the same meaning. The cat should be a cat, not necessarily an identical cat, but a cat. I have no idea why this works either, but somehow it does. If diffusion is copying, then AI image generation is copyright infringement. Is diffusion copying? On the one hand, it's kind of like copying because it reproduces watermarks from stock photos. On the other hand, it's pretty bad at it, so it sort of made something new. The clear conclusion is that it is unclear. That's why this topic is so controversial. It is truly ambiguous. This is like the dress controversy all over again, except on fire. My guess is that this ambiguity will result in diffusion being considered fair use. It will be hard to definitively prove that it's copying because this stuff is complicated. This is going to multiple courts, we'll learn a lot, and we will get an answer. Let's just assume for now that diffusion is kind of like copying, but not totally copying. Then we can take a swing at the most important question of all. Is it ethically right, or at least acceptable, that these artists' images were used without consent? It seems like it's a pretty general consensus in our community that we do not want our work to be used to train AI models. I am sympathetic to how artists are feeling, but it does seem acceptable to me. For starters, most of the training images are pretty generic, and in this context, they seem public domain. Sure, this might be your photo of a pretty girl, or a dog, or a quesadilla, but it's very similar to thousands of others. Nobody owns the idea of these images, and that's really what's getting emulated. The biggest controversy is over a small minority of the images. These are artwork by professional artists and serious amateurs. 
Let's get this clear up front. No artist owns their art entirely. If you don't believe me, here's the artist Scott Christian Saba saying the same thing. My art is a mosaic, an amalgamation of the art and artist that inspired me on my journey to become the artist I am today. The collective achievements of art belong to everyone. They are as free as the air. Too many artists are getting overly possessive about what they believe is theirs. This artist went viral claiming that their art was used to train an AI model. AI art is theft. It is an awful, awful way to just like steal from artists. It's evil. And if you use AI art, you are dead to me. They base this on images like these, but the only similarities are the color palette and the basic composition. They're otherwise very different, like for instance, this is trash and this is good. Yes, there is some piracy going on in AI image generation. There's some piracy going on everywhere. I'm doing piracy right now and you're watching me. There are plenty of caveats. Training AIs on individual artists' work does seem wrong. Everyone should be able to opt out of all training sets. And maybe AIs should simply not train on images from active art communities. Also, some company should make an image generator trained on public domain and licensed images, which would avoid this hornet's nest entirely. Somebody please do this. But overall, I don't see any deep injustice here. In closing, AI image generation seems not guilty. How disruptive AI art will actually be is not yet clear, but it will definitely have some sort of role and artists are going to have to adapt. And the rest of us should take note. If you think what's happening to a bunch of illustrators doesn't concern you, think again. The fear and anxiety the art community feels is going to spread. Many of us will have to adapt. Any mind work that can get automated will get automated. Blue collar workers have been living this for decades. Now it's white collar workers' turn. Of all humanity's technological advances, artificial intelligence is the most morally ambiguous from inception. It has the potential to create either a utopia or a dystopia. Which reality will we get? Just like everybody else, I do not know what's coming. But it seems likely that in coming decades, these visions of our imminent demise will seem campy and naive because our imaginings of the future always become campy and naive. AIs will not be dominating creativity because AIs do not innovate. They synthesize what we already know. AI is derivative by design and inventive by chance. Computers can now create, but they are not creative. To be creative, you need to have some awareness, some understanding of what you've done. AIs know nothing whatsoever about the images and words they generate. Most crucially, AIs have no comprehension of the essence of art, living. AIs don't know what it's like to be a child, to grow up, to fall in love, to fall in lust, to be angry, to fight, to forgive, to be a parent, to age, to lose your parents, to get sick, to face death. This is what human expression is about. Art and creativity are bound to living, to feeling. Art is the voice of a person. And whenever AI art is anything more than aesthetically pleasing, it's not because of what the AI did. It's because of what a person did. Art is by humans for humans. In some videos about AI, the big reveal is that this video was actually made by AI. But this video and this series is the opposite. Nothing has been AI. Except where I cited AI art, this is entirely human made. The words are all mine, but they're merged from the thoughts of countless people. 
Everything you've seen and heard is from real filmmakers and musicians and game developers and other artists. All these thoughts and all this media were remixed by me into something new. And yes, I did it all without permission. Everything is a remix is a testament to the brilliance and beauty of human creativity. In particular, it's a testament to collective creativity. Human genius is not individual, it is shared. You, my dear viewer, are a human. The best technology there is with no successor in sight. The future is ours and it will be won or lost by us brilliant, stupid, horrible, beautiful humans. But there is only one complete certainty about what's coming. AI will not stop. And we need the help that artificial intelligence can potentially bring to the complex problems of the 21st century. We are saying goodbye to the old world and entering a new one. But we are not obligated to accept this new world as is. Our duty is to make it the best we can, to make this revolution better than the last one. We are launching into the unimaginable, as we always are. We are always hurtling into some inconceivable future. There is no other way to move forward. So, here we go. <laughs>